Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. A little while ago, I did a small piece about a ruggedized mobile telephone. In fact, I was using it as a prop in one of my videos. It was lent to me by a company called OneDirect. I've had a lot of interest about ruggedized mobile telephones, particularly for the, uh, the active person, the woodworker, the forest worker, or whatever. And so I've been lucky enough to get the loan of another mobile telephone from OneDirect. But before I talk about this telephone in particular, let me just give you a bit of background. You can see some mobile telephones lined up here. These are models I've had over the years, a brick from uh, the 80s, uh, and they start getting a little bit more uh, sophisticated and smaller. Uh, but this one in particular, uh, made by Motorola, it's the Motorola V600, uh, was my pride and joy when I had it. And I loved it. It was a clamshell design, which meant that when the phone was in your pocket, it was reasonably well protected. But it wasn't waterproof. And it got wet, not very wet, and it failed, and it's never worked since. I was absolutely devastated. So when looking for a mobile telephone, in particular, I'm after something which is going to be waterproof. Now, OneDirect have very kindly arranged the loan of this BRVV9H an Android 4.4 machine running with a quad-core 1.3 gigahertz processor. It's got a magnesium chassis, and that's what gives it its strength and rigidity. And the screen is made of Gorilla Glass. It's protected from uh, dust ingress and water to IP68. More of this shortly. Now, it covers GSM frequencies 850, 900, 1800, and 1900 megahertz, and it's 3G. Also, it's WCDMA 850, 2100 megahertz. It's got a one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of ROM. The front-facing camera is 1.3 megapixels, and the rear-facing camera is 8 megapixels. It runs Bluetooth BT 4.1. It's got a micro SD card, uh, which has got a capacity up to 64 gigabits, I believe. And, it's, of course, it's Wi-Fi. It's got GPS distance sensors, gyro sensing. It's got a dual SIM. The standard battery is 2800 milliampere hour, but you can have the optional 4500 milliampere hour battery with just a very slight addition in case thickness. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the Android operating system because this video is basically looking at the physical phone itself. Now, IP ratings are in two parts. There's dust uh, and there's water. And what I'm going to do is just describe them to you. Uh, so it goes IP followed by two numbers. If it's zero and zero, it means it's not protected. Uh, the first digit refers to uh, the ingress of dust or foreign bodies. And IP1, for example, is equipment that is only protected against items which are bigger than 50 millimeters. So it might just have a mesh over it to stop someone putting a piece of wood into it. Uh, and then you go down to uh, the first digit being, say, three, and then that uh, aperture goes down to 2.5 millimeters. But IP6 uh, at the beginning is, means it's dust tight. And that's what this phone is, IP6. And the second digit uh, refers to its ability uh, to uh, protect itself from uh, water. And the lowest end, zero, means no protection. One uh, means just the odd drip drop. Uh, three is spray. Uh, five is a water jet. Uh, six is a very powerful water jet. IP7, it means it can be immersed, immersed into water up to a meter deep. Uh, and IP8, theoretically means uh, that it can be immersed in water uh, for uh, an indefinite length of time. Now, uh, this phone uh, is stated as being IP68, which is the highest figure of all of those. And you can probably just see that there's that web page uh, still being displayed uh, whilst it's in the water. And it's actually quite a handy way of getting all that dust off. Uh, so there we go. That phone is rated at IP68. Oh. Oh. It's truth.
Oh, John, no, it's absolutely tipping down. I'm sorry. We'll leave it. No, it's not getting any better. Cheers. Now, this has been in the water uh, for about five minutes now. And there it is. Out of the water, still uh, working uh, nicely. And uh, I can prove that it's working uh, even as a telephone. And there it goes. So there's an incoming call which I've just generated. Now it achieves its uh, waterproof capability by uh, having the most superb case. And uh, I'll turn it around here and you can see uh, the battery compartment is secured with two screws. And you would have to undo those and you take this cover off and all the way around that cover is a seal and then that allows you to get at the battery and get at the two ports where the SIM cards are. I'm going to have to dry this telephone off before I can open up to show you. So that's it uh, dry. I'm just going to undo these two screws now. And then you can probably see inside here is the uh, battery compartment uh, and also where the SIM cards are. And if you look closely, all the way around here, there we have a seal. Now having removed the cover, uh, you can now see the battery which is there, which I can remove by just lifting up like so, and that's the battery removed. Uh, and then we have two slots that are visible. Uh, this one is for the memory card, and then here we have one of my SIM cards. Underneath there is a slot where you can put a second SIM card. I've only got the one installed and that's like so. And this is my uh, little memory card. This one's just one gigabyte. Then one would just uh, replace the battery by pushing it in like so and then replacing the cover. Bottom goes in first and then it's a good idea with any sort of seal when you start screwing screws up like this is to do it evenly. So I'm just going to start this side off and then I'm going to start this side off. And now I'm going to actually get it sort of nipped up nice and tight. But you're not trying to screw these screws in as though uh, you're holding a, a shelf on the side of a wall. These are small engineering screws. So you just nip them up nice and tight. And that's the phone in good order again. Now the chassis being made of one solid piece of magnesium and also the uh, way that this extra detailing around the outside uh, is built is such that it's going to be pretty tough. So I can drop it onto a hard surface and it's still displaying uh, the uh, web page that we've had up for a while. I can drop it uh, quite often. I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. Now it is quite possible with an ordinary mobile telephone to uh, put a, a protection around it a, a, like an exoskeleton uh, and that will give it some resilience to uh, the odd knock and a little bit of extra waterproofing as well. However, uh, unless the chassis is made of magnesium, as this one is, uh, then you're not going to have the core strength that's required for any mobile telephone that's going to be subject to a sort of workshop environment, uh, uh, an outward boundary type environment, or whatever else uh, that you can imagine. And the phone can even be used as a torch. Very handy. Now, I'm really grateful uh, to OneDirect for providing this Bravus uh, mobile phone for me to show you today. Uh, it's worked really well. Uh, it was put through its paces. Uh, that, that scene uh, at the seaside, uh, when it was thrown into the water, uh, well, it wasn't actually meant to be like that. I, I said to uh, uh, the operator, I said, uh, just place it in the water. We don't want to break the mobile phone on its first day out. Uh, it was thrown in and it survived. It worked perfectly well. And it survived everything that I've done to it. And I, I think this is going to be a perfectly good, rugged mobile phone solution for anyone who leads a roughy toughy life, outward bound, uh, hiking in the hills, mountain climbing, uh, in a workshop with lots of bits of wood falling all over the place, uh, saws being placed down on it accidentally or deliberately. 
who knows? So there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.